very much, Paul. My next guest uh, is a fine actor. There's no getting around that. He was in the uh, Buddy Holly story, a terrific movie, and, and he was great in that. He's uh, been in many other motion pictures, and uh, recently he uh, filmed a movie entitled DC Cab, which will be released shortly, and uh, has been hired now. I'll tell you what he's been hired to do. This is uh, another interesting thing that he's involved in. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to explain why he hangs around the Trancas market, Gary Busey. Gary. <laughs> Hello there. The folks know you and love you. Hello, New York. Yes, sir. Uh, this is uh, this is my dog Chili, and uh, a very sensitive Chili. dog. One of her favorite uh, things is sitting in front of the television when Bob shows his films. That's a handsome-looking dog. This dog has never been loved. It's a young lady dog that adopted us from the beach. And she sent this picture to Bob. To Bob Dog, love Chili Dog. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's very nice. So yeah, maybe, that. maybe we could get them together when you come back to the market. Well, uh, Bob's missing some of the original factory equipment, so it wouldn't... It, it wouldn't uh, really? Yeah, it wouldn't... She'd never know that. <laughs> uh, no, that's a great-looking doggy. Look How old that. is she? That dog, I don't know. She just showed up one day and said, What are y'all doing? Can I live with you? Uh -huh. so, Been there ever since? Yeah, it's just... Uh, it's prototype of Pluto. Yeah. It's the funniest dog I've ever had. Now, can, can we keep this here? That's for uh, you and Bob. All right. Thank you very much, Gary. That's nice of you. Now, I, I mentioned this a couple of times. I keep running into you at the various supermarkets in the neighborhood in California. Isn't it fun? That's the only place to go to have fun. Social activity. That's where the bus stops. It doesn't go any farther. Uh -huh. <laughs> I love the supermarket. And you... It smells in there, back where they package those little, uh, you know, those little chicken packages and things. Uh -huh. They smell better than they taste. And so you just go down there for in the afternoon and... Uh... Well, I haven't been going down there much lately because I've been eating fish. I've been training Franco Tlumbo, who now, all right, now Mr. That, Olympia. Now, tell the folks about that. I mentioned this is a really uh, phenomenal undertaking for anybody to be doing. Well, gosh. This is another American legend, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But, boy, when we talk about it in those terms, it's like you're going to play Mount Rushmore, you know, in 20 minutes, which yeah. is kind of like that. Yeah. But I was, you know, like a potato in a leotard. I weighed about 220 pounds <laughs> and, and uh, had to get back down to weight, and I hadn't worked in a while. I just sat in a room and played the guitar. So Franco Tlumbo, Mr. Olympia there, a doctor of chiropractic and nutrition. I feel funny sitting here. I feel, you know. Well, don't, no, what's, do whatever you want. Oh, Gary. That's better. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's uh, the best trainer in the world. Uh -huh. he Former Mr. Uh, Universe, Olympia. Mr. World, or Mr. Olympia. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And he came, did it when he was, he could probably be all of those. Yeah. But he's trained me, and I've like, got about 15, 20 more pounds to lose. <laughs> <laughs> this is really fun. I, this is the first late night thing I've done. I mean, no, it's not the first late night thing I've done. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Schaefer writes my equipment. Uh, now, tell the folks the part. You didn't mention the part you're going to be playing. Well, we're going to go down to Tuscaloosa, Alabama, uh, and come out of the tunnel with a crimson tide and talk about Bear Bryant. Yeah. Now, you're playing him from the time he was... I'm working on the voice. What do you think? It's a great voice, although I... Oh, the takes are short. It still hurts. I've got four weeks or four or five weeks. You're playing his entire life from what, age 18? 19 to 68. Now, how can that possibly be? You're right. a young man. You can't... Uh... We're going to get a number 40 grocery sack and put it over my head and just draw a picture. <laughs> no, we're going to get the best makeup man we can find because that's what's going to do it, you know. Yeah. I mean, I've got to look in the mirror and be able to, you know. Yeah. It's four different looks. We open up with a little boy wearing... He wears cleats to church. And uh, <laughs> dedication. And then we see me when we go into wrestle a bear. Yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> and uh, then we have, then he's at Texas A&M and gets a little older. And then he goes to Alabama and gets a little older. And then later in life, he... You, see, you mentioned wrestling a bear. Is that that's how he got literally his, wrestling yeah, a bear? Yeah, that's how he got his name. See, he, uh, the, the, the days there when they didn't have much money, these guys would bring these bears around to town. And for every minute you stayed in the cage of that bear, you got a dollar. Well, uh, Mr. Bryant made four dollars. Wow. But before he got his money, that damn bear skipped town. <laughs> and there's a scene where Paul's running after the bear. Never got his money, but he got the name. Yeah. In fact, in Alabama, when you come into Alabama, there are signs that say, you are now entering bear country. Well, there, this man is seriously a he legend. He could run for God in sure. Alabama. And the closer I get down south, the more my head gets bowed. You know, I've got a, 
I've got to get, uh, I can't, you know, it's not, it's like Steve Ash, the guy that directed Buddy Holly, said, now we can't take this serious. We just have to go out and do it. I said, okay. Now, and, what, uh, what was that like, getting ready? Did, did you talk to people that uh, Buddy Holly no, knew? No, I didn't talk to did anybody. talk to his family at all? No, I didn't have time. I was in the water surfing there, that big Wednesday deal. The big Wednesday <laughs> surfing movie. Oh. And I got out of the water and came home. They dyed my hair, curled it, and gave me those glasses and said, hit it. So you didn't have any research at all? You didn't... Uh... Oh, well, I was in the fifth grade when rock and roll started, didn't mm -hmm. Back in Oklahoma and Texas, I got back in the mirror and pantomimed those Buddy Holly records. And Larry Williams and Elvis and Roy Orbison, mother would run me out of the house. But I stuck with it. And uh -huh. then all of a sudden, we, the movie came around, you know. And yeah. it was a... We did it live. Did it for about eight hundred thousand dollars in six weeks. It turned out very nicely, as of course as you know. What about his uh, Buddy Holly's family? Did they like the film? Did you talk to them? Yeah. After? Well, they, you know, you, they're the family, so and it's impossible in one hundred fourteen minutes time to tell the utter truth. So we had to take into account. Well, the idea was to show the energy and essence of what he was, what yeah. Buddy was. Yeah. And I think looking at that, they sure do. What are you doing musically now? I know. Uh, well, I have a plan that I'd like to, uh, I'd like to come back in October when it's a little cooler, and uh, I'd like to play some music on this show. And I haven't shown any music of mine since Buddy Holly. I'm none. Yeah. And uh, I'm ready to do that. All right. What, what could we look forward to? Just high dollar Bob. <laughs> uh, can, and uh, you work alone now? Oh, no, no, no. I don't. Well, no. It's every time it's different. Uh -huh. I've got 65th grade tap dancing girls in black and pink hot pants for one show. <laughs> and then there's Jim Keltner, and then there's uh, Billy Burnett, and there's George Hawkins. Those are the human rockets. Now, will they be here with you when you come back? Well, for this special thing here, I've got two boys out there. Uh, they're doing a picture now in town with uh, Catherine Hepburn. And I'm not going to say their names, but... Uh, uh, we have a situation that we want to talk about later. Okay, so we'll look forward to that. Let the folks circle their TV guide. Heck and it, yeah. And again, this is not the kind of thing folks are going to get on cable. That's right. It's only going to happen for the right first here. time once right, That's right. here. Free American. Now, um... I'm having fun. You, you also, uh... You look That's like, pretty cheesy. Yeah. <laughs> Who made that? Did you make that? No, I didn't make that. We have a, a staff of high-paid designers and... and, uh, and well, it's uh, darn good looking. Well, no, it's, it's sure. It's, it, no, I, now look, Gary, you're looking at... See, on the monitor, it looks great. Oh, heck. Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah, that works there. Now, you look like... I've got to lose that weight. You, Gary, you look like... Uh, you know, the, I've lost 20 pounds, and the thinner I get, the fatter I feel. No, no, no. Uh, well, what's in the back of your jacket? Me. Let me see the back of your oh, jacket. this belongs to, uh, this is not my jacket. I know what you're going to do. <laughs> well, okay, oh, yeah, that's... Belongs to a bigger guy. No, it's actually, this is my jacket. There, there can't be a bigger guy. guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I wanted to dress up, you know? Yeah, this, but, you know, you, you look like... Uh... Oh, come on. No, 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 I, you look like you'd like to turn the dump over. What does that mean? That's oh, you know explain. what it means. You turn, turn the, the dump, dump over. over. Sure, you know. I mean, a guy who says, high dollar bop. High dollar bop, turn the dump over. Yeah. Do you want to write a song? Maybe we could a little later. We could. We call E.F. Hutton. <laughs> now, now, you're also... Turn the dump over. Turn the dump over. Boy, that's good. <laughs> Fall in the way to thank you. Now, do you... Uh, tell me about working with uh, Jerry Lee Lewis. Oh, uh, boy. Well, that was... Nick Fleetwood. Yeah. Keith Richards. That's correct. And what is this? This is a, uh, a show. Now, there's some guys who could turn the dump over. Now, they have turned the dump over yeah. several times. And uh, it's a show called Salute. It's going to be on, I think, September 25th, syndicated. And we put on pink and black tuxedos and got out there and sang High School Confidential. And a lot of fun. Little Richard and Ruth Buzzy and Amy Lou Harris and uh, Fleetwood and uh, Keith and myself. Chris Offerson, Dick Clark, ask us some funny questions. Uh -huh. <laughs> He'll do that. <laughs> yeah, he's good. Uh, now, you're coming back for sure, right? Yeah. All right, you come back. Yeah, for... but listen, I'm going to, you told me I was going to fly out here this time. Well, I got enough money, and you told I came in my Jeep. I blew uh -huh. out three tires. Oh, uh, we'll take care of the well, tires. I would like to be able to fly, you know. We'll take care of the tires. <laughs> uh, good luck with the movie. <laughs> Gary Busey, folks. We'll be right back with Carol Lisa. <laughs>
back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. My first guest tonight is a very exciting actor, and uh, if you get a chance to go see the new movie that he's in, he's a, a terrific, uh, it's a lot of fun to watch this man. He is starring in a new film. It'll open uh, September 28th across this fine country of ours called The Bear. He's a very talented actor. A pleasure to welcome back Gary Busey. Nice to see you. You look terrific. Thank you. What are you doing? Much. You do too. Thank you. What are you? You waving it? Who are you waving it? I was waving it. Will. Oh, our Paul. Uh, bass player, yeah. Paul Schaefer. One of my favorite drummers in the world up there. Steve Gadd. Yeah, and here we are in the same position. You know that guy's from uh, Oklahoma, Sam Harris. Oh, really? Do you know Sam? I don't know him, but I know uh, he's from. Uh, he does look like he's struck by a blunt object. Looks like somebody just maybe tapped him on the head with a two by six. A two by six yeah. or a twelve by twelve, but he's from Sand Springs. He just won that star. Yeah, special. oh yeah, it's a big deal. Got a hit record and everything. And you we're know, giving this away as the prize tonight. That's a good prize. I'm yeah. in the same position I was the last time I was here, where uh, I feel like I should be facing you a little. You're more. fine. I can't. You're fine. You know, we hear this a lot. People come out and they say, "I'm uncomfortable in the chair," and and you're fine. I'm fine. Yeah, you look good. I look good. Yeah, I feel pretty good. Good. Did you have a good trip in? Yeah. Next. <laughs> this, I feel better looking at who you I'm feel better. You feel a little better now. All right. I well, think it's better to look who you're talking to. Yeah. There All right. You go. Uh, Congratulations uh, on oh, your. Oh, that's uh, very nice of you. Thank you very much. Yeah. We look. We looked silly though, didn't we? You look like he's running them riders through sheep dip real quick. You know? <laughs> or you were double parked. Well, we do that occasionally. Now, uh, Gary, uh, did you have a good trip in? Did you come in from Los Angeles? Yeah. Now, the last time I came in, I, I was sent enough money to drive my Jeep. Mm -hmm. And I blew out three tires. Yeah. And I picked up some Jehovah Witnesses to help me get through. <laughs> this time, I had to hitchhike halfway. Uh -huh. And I would appreciate it the next time I do the show. And I want to do it again because I love this television show you do. Oh, that's very nice of you. If you could just fly me out here, coach. <laughs> Now, you're making this up. Aren't you? <laughs> uh, yeah. When was the last time you hitchhiked? You look like a guy who has done some hitchhiking. Right? I have done some hitchhiking. When was the last time you actually hitched a ride anywhere? I was on an icy road, Highway 169, between Tulsa, Oklahoma, and Coffeyville, Kansas, and I was standing on this little icy knoll, and an 18 wheeler came by and blew me off into the ditch. Yeah. And that's the last time I decided I'd hitchhike. How long ago was it? Uh, that was about, uh, that was 1960. Four. Four. So you, you weren't a movie star then? These questions better get easier. <laughs> uh, um, just, uh, just go ahead and relax, Gary. And uh, Tell me about the bear. I, I meant it when I said this. I saw the movie the other day. I went to a, a screening, and uh, I really got a kick out of your performance. You do a nice job. It reminded me... You got a kick. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I got a kick. It was pleasant. I, I thought you were fine. Thank you very much. Uh, but it, it reminded me of, uh, well, I don't even want to say that, but again, it's another character part like the, uh, the Buddy Holly story where you actually become the guy. It was real entertaining. Tell the folks about the movie. Well, tell the folks about the movie. I think the most exciting part of the movie was having to wrestle a 600-pound black bear. Oh, yeah. And they covered me with chicken grease so the bear would lick me all over. <laughs> And I was allergic to bear spit, so they took me downstairs and washed me off and wrapped me up in saran wrap, uh -huh. and I went right back up to wrestle a bear. Now, the noise a bear makes is like, <laughs> like that. When the bear saw me come back up, he was very excited. Uh -huh. So I wrestled the bear for about six hours. I lost seven pounds. Yeah. I recommend it highly as a diet. So, <laughs> so they, you, they cover you in the saran wrap and put the chicken fat on top of that. Yeah, you just wipe the grease on your arms and yeah. you stand up and you say, with two little chicken necks in your hand, you say, break up. And the bear goes, that's his cue mm -hmm. to start licking. How much does the bear weigh? 600 pounds or more. I've never encountered a slow dancer as strong as that. <laughs> and he just would put you on the floor and start licking you. To, yeah, and, uh, is that dangerous? God, I guess so. It could be. Yeah. Did he? Did the bear? Did the bear smell? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 
Yeah, the bear smelled. The bear was pretty gamey. <laughs> I, if I'd have known what kind of cologne that bear liked in ahead of time, I would have, yeah. you know. Now, tell the, tell the folks why it is that you did this. Now, this was part of the movie, right? Yeah, well, it begins uh, when the Coach Bryant, Bear Bryant, who coached at the University of Alabama, he uh, got his name by wrestling a bear that came to town. And if you stayed in the ring with him for one minute, you got a dollar. Mm -hmm. And uh, we start out wrestling the bear, and we take him to when he's 68 years old. And that's how he got his name. So yeah. they had me wrestle this damn bear for two days. Yeah, yeah, it's a good scene. They had two bears. I think one was on downers because it never did get up. His name was Pooh. It was Pooh and Teddy. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, what does what does the chicken fat smell like? Chicken fat? Yeah. Is that all right? It smelled better than the bear. Yeah. But now, you said you were allergic to the bear saliva? The bear saliva. Now, how, how does that manifest itself? The bear what saliva? Are, no, no, I know that. <laughs> no, but, you know, if you're... If, did you break out in a rash? Did your... Uh... Oh, I had welts on me like uh, big silver dollars and pancakes. Ooh. And uh, the trainer was from New Zealand. He said, I've got an idea. Let's wrap him up in yeah. saran wrap. Yeah. Oh, that's strange. This uh, is what you do making movies sometimes. Yeah. What is that? This is a sponge. This is one of the prizes in tonight's uh, Mr. September contest. This isn't a birth control device, is it? <laughs> um, we'll be right back here. <laughs> I know that, but I, is she working in that area? Well, she, you know, works okay. keeping me out of trouble. All right, okay. Well, then she got her hands full, then, doesn't she? I know she does. I'd like to give you this before we get back okay. on television here. Thank you, ma'am. We are on the <laughs> <laughs> I hope this movie does really well for you. As I was saying, it's very entertaining. We're going to look at a couple of minutes of it. Do you know the scene we're going to see here now? Uh, shoot, I don't know if I've been brief. Is this? Oh, Gary. This might be the one where... Now, you're supposed to know. Well, I think it may be the one where we're throwing, uh, where the team is throwing little uh, rain frogs against the garage door. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Do, we, is any, do you, you don't know what it is? Is it necessary to know what it is? It's in the locker room. It's in right. the locker but room. seriously, the next time, the next movie, know a little something about the clip, all right? I'll come better prepared. Gee, many. All right. Uh, <laughs> here it is, the mystery clip, a few minutes from the motion picture, The Bear, starring mystery Gary Busey. Clip. Real nice. It's, uh, like I said, it's a, it's a lot of fun to watch you do that. It's a real nice, uh, nice job. Thanks. Now, last time you were on the show, you said you were going to sing. You said, I'm going to come back and, and tell... You said, I'm going to bring people and we're going to sing. Now, who were you going to bring? Oh, uh... A lot of folks, wasn't Yeah, I was going to yeah. bring a couple of guys with me. Who? Uh, Billy Cross and Nick Nolte, but they've since been run out of the country. <laughs> uh, no, that was... Uh, I got started to this project, Coach Bryan. I moved to Alabama and started uh, meeting people that knew him to yeah. tell me the stories about him so I could kind of gather some uh, inspiration to, you know, put him on the film. Yeah. So what's that have to do with singing? You can't sing now because of this? Uh, no. No, you can't. Sing now. I'll tell you what, though. Shoot, uh, I left my guitar in the truck. <laughs> well, you put me on the spot here. I could sing a song. I, you know. Now, let me... Let me ask you this, are you sure you want to sing? Are you absolutely positive? Because if you don't want to, you can sing the next time. I was just saying that we were all a little, well, we were, we were disappointed, Gary. When we were kind of looking forward to you singing and then it didn't happen. This is an interesting way to build tension, isn't it? Yeah. Boy, I think probably be best to sing the next time I come. Sing the next time. Okay. Seems to be a popular decision. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next time, uh, the film opens 
September 28th. <laughs> is that right? September 28th? It's called The Bear. Right. <laughs> and uh, this is the star uh, as uh, Bear Bryant, Gary Busey. Good luck, Gary. Nice to see you again. We'll be back. We've got to go away from station identification. <laughs> Boy, speaking of guys with nothing to do, take a look at this photo. Can we sh uh, see, uh, show this? Uh, this would be, uh, who is this? Uh, Gary Busey and Robert Duvall. Do you get the feeling they've lost their minds altogether? Uh, they sent that in to us. Uh, I guess they're on a uh, location somewhere filming a, a motion picture. <laughs> yeah, that's what it looks like. Looks like it's going to be a really good film, too, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, sir. Ooh, can we get tickets now? Is it too early? Can we... There wasn't Chip's moment again, was no, it? No, Chip's. No, no, Chip's. He liked it. Now, you just finished doing another movie with this man here, and you sent us this photograph. Gary, we, yeah, we, 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 we took that picture because I hear you always talk about him. You see him at the Trancas Market. That's right. Yeah, Gary. So we took... I go up picture. shopping yeah. at the Trancas Market, and there's right. Gary Busey sitting yeah. on the uh, grocery carts, right. so frightening just, people away. Right. So, we, yeah. <laughs> so we just took the picture and thought we'd send it to you, like <laughs> on a joke. It was very nice. Yeah. And, and what is... This film is about... Uh, uh, you tell them. It's, an, it's just briefly. It's an adventure film about uh, five plumbers who's one of, one of the plumbers' brothers been kidnapped by a terrorist in South mm -hmm. America. So they hire a mercenary to take him in there to get yeah. the, to get the guys out. It sounds like a great story. It's, it's, yeah, it's simple but nice, yeah. you know. Did it turn out well? I guess I haven't seen it. Yes, it is time for another guest, and gosh, we couldn't be happier. Coming up now on 7, 7 past the hour. 7 past the hour. It's the correct time on late night. You know, uh, our next guest is a terrific actor. This man was nominated for an Academy Award a few years ago playing Buddy Holly in the Buddy Holly story. He can soon be seen in two brand new motion pictures. One is called Eye of the Tiger, and the other one is called Let's Get Harry. And he is also has the distinction of being the very last person killed on the television series Gunsmoke. Please welcome a handful of trouble, Gary Busey. Gary, come on out and bust somebody up. Hey, Gary, how you doing? Nice to see you. Come on over here. What do you got? I enjoy a, a fine cigar. Thank you very much. Yeah, very nice. going. I'm going to need an ashtray here, probably. I'll get you an ashtray right here. Don't worry about a thing. Right on. Now, um... Right on, New York. <laughs> right on. <laughs> How about those Mets? <laughs> I'm getting with the spirit. Yeah, that's good. Uh, is it true that you were the last uh, character on this uh, series, Gunsmoke, to get uh, shot, killed? No, I didn't get killed. I, I was killed. the last guy. Where did you get that? What's that? That record album. Oh, this is uh, an old, uh, it's an old carp That's the record. band, yeah, the yeah. band I went to California. I was just something I was listening to earlier today, and we just, you were. We just left it out here. <laughs> were you getting dressed or something? Yeah, I want to just kind of relax, get yeah. in the mood for the show, and I, it's I said, good I'd, music I'd to like to listen to. to some carp this afternoon. Yeah, yeah, man. You can't look at dress this. it up. All right, now that you brought it, you take a look at this. Up, you think this guy is trouble now. Look at this. There he is right there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. I yeah. can beat any state in the union. Yeah. What was Carp? I wonder who was laying out my clothes there. <laughs> what kind of group was this? Well, we were from Oklahoma and played rock and roll music. That's a trip on the Delta Queen. We uh -huh. wrote a song called Save the Delta Queen, and uh, the owner heard it and put us on the boat. Yeah. Did you sell any of these records? Uh, I think a few at some roadside souvenir places uh -huh. in the South. You know, kind of taffy records. Yeah. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that record, you know. It holds up today. I didn't say there today. anything was. It really, it holds up today? You bet. Yeah. Now, did, did you at one point think that the music was going to be your end road to show business? Well, it was. That's what got me out to California. Yeah. It was yeah. a rock and roll band, and uh, everything took off from then. Yeah. In fact, the last time you were here... I said I was going to sing. You said you were going to sing, and not only were you going to sing, you were going to bring a lot of luminaries with you to sing along. Remember that? Who told you that? Oh, you told me that. Well, we haven't what done do you that mean? What do you mean, who told you that? You told me. Do you remember who was going to be here? I remember who I said. Yeah, who, who? I didn't say it on the air. Well, all right, tell him who you said. Oh, I didn't say it on television. That's all right, Gary. Forget about that. You, you weren't under oath then, and don't worry about it. This is what it's like, being under oath up here. No, it's not. Okay. No. Uh, 
I forget. <laughs> I do. That was another time. Who was going to be here to sing with Gary Busey? Nick Nolte. Yeah, Nick Nolte was one. Nolte. Yeah. Keith Richards. Keith Richards. Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger. <laughs> Tom DeLuise is coming. And others. And others. Fatty Duke was Now, is, is that still a, a possibility, do you think? Not those guys. Those guys <laughs> are in another band now. <laughs> so I've got to get a new band. Now, what about, speaking of bands, what happened to the other guys in Carp? Did they go on to uh, be uh, successes in music? They're all three here in New York working mm -hmm. as musicians. They do a lot of jingles, and yeah. they're great session musicians. Yeah. John Crowder, Ronnie Getman, and Glenn Mitchell are those four yeah. boys. You know, you look uh, so much different from the last time you were here. You've lost well, a lot I am. of weight. I am so much different. How much weight did you lose? 60 pounds. How, what did you... What did, yeah! Yeah! Why not? Yeah! <laughs> what, what, uh, well, it's silly. No, what, was your, what was your total weight at the time? 240. 240, and you dropped 60. Why, why did you do it, and how did you do it? Well, let's see. I was just... Uh, I was too fat. <laughs> <laughs> I took off my, all my clothes one day and just stood in front of the mirror. Uh -huh. And stood there as long as I could and then even then some. And, <laughs> and I wasn't feeling right anyway. My, I didn't read the instructions uh -huh. the first time out of the shoot in the show business game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there, so, there are instructions? There are. I didn't realize that. Well, you better read them. Paul, did you get you your show business instructions? You got, you got I memorized mine. Show business? <laughs> what, what are, are some the of the instructions? Uh, <laughs> what, what did you miss by not reading the instructions? Nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't miss a thing. So you, you had maybe a I mean, little... I mean, I had an idea what the instructions were, mm -hmm. and I got pretty close to some of the yeah. connections, but it's like I never read the instructions when I'd make a model plane. When I was a kid, I had two, not enough patience, and I'd always end up getting it just about fixed, then I'd leave out something yeah. so mm -hmm. the plane wouldn't work. So uh, this is your way of telling us that maybe you had a little too much fun somewhere along the way? No. <laughs> I'm having more fun now. Than more ever. fun now. Yeah. yeah. But All right, but can, uh, Gary, no. compare for us your lifestyle before the dramatic weight loss and your lifestyle now. Well, that was kind of uncontrolled danger. Yeah. Now I'm, I've got I'm controlled, controlled danger. Now, when you, when you it's were... It's still reckless momentum, Dave. Yeah, well, no, we... <laughs> I can sense that. Yeah, uh, can you? Oh, yeah, but now, but tell, describe for us what it was like before. What are you doing? You've tried to improve that since I was here. Well, no, we, we feel that it's just fine the way it is. It's and there's pretty good. Uh, no, it's it more high-tech. Yeah. Now, may, maybe you don't remember exactly how it was when you were here. I do. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. So, now, beforehand, you were, you were trouble, weren't you? I yeah, mean, I was trouble. Well, now, I was trouble. Can you just give us a sampling of what your life was like there? It was like a mutant birthday clown. Somebody that shows up at your, somebody that shows up at your birthday party. Oh, God. A birthday clown, he's supposed to have fun, and he just... <laughs> Maybe we should pay him off and get him out of here. Now, you know? Did you did you find yourself going to a lot of birthday parties dressed as a clown, Gary? <laughs> you know, let's, yeah. let's go on to I something. Think I else. did. Let's just talk about the movies. Now you got two brand new films. Right on. What? <laughs> this what? is a late night audience. Now how did you? How right did, on. No, how did you? Right on. How did you lose the weight before we get to the films? Was there a special diet, or you just said discipline? Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. It's everything. I, I started, uh, I built a gym at my house yeah. and put in free weights and right. started doing free weights. And but how did you drop the weight itself? Did you cut down on I what you were I did several things at once. Oh, yeah, I went on a low-carbohydrate diet. Yeah. I didn't eat more than 50 carbohydrates a day, and I stuck with fish, and I stopped eating bread and drinking and all of that. Yeah. And sugar is sugar's the worst thing for, yeah. for so, you. But all of that was in the instructions, if you just read those. I know. Yeah. Well, I know that now. Yeah. Uh, okay, now on to the films. One with Robert Duvall. I think there may be one more, there may be more than one set of instructions to this show business game. <laughs> you think so? Yeah. Yeah. You, you implying that perhaps I haven't read everything I should have read before? <laughs> you and Robert Duvall were down in Mexico. That's, uh... Oh, yeah, Veracruz. Yeah, what's that one about? Is that, uh... Let's, go, let's get Harry. Let's get Harry. Tell you us know about what? that. I was in da I was just in Dallas where Let's Get Harry open. Mm -hmm. Opened the paper, and there's not one ad for Let's Get Harry. I'm looking all over. I finally see it down there in these little multi-screen things. Yeah. Seems, and then they say it doesn't do business. Well, maybe they should put an ad in the paper. Yeah. yeah. You know, give the people the idea that this is. Now, now that's, uh, so is that this... Was a, that's a good picture, too. A good movie. So it's going to yeah. be all over the United States? Yeah, soon it will be. It's four plumbers that uh, have a brother kidnapped in South America, and they go back to... Uh, they, they want the State Department to help them, mm -hmm. but the State Department won't help yeah, them. So, so they go down themselves, hire a mercenary. And take the law into law. their own hands. Yo! 
Which is the, the kind of thing that you might do yourself, really. Any minute. Yeah. <laughs> Any minute. Uh, now, we have a picture of you and uh, Robert Duvall uh, down there in Mexico. Uh, there you are. Yeah! That's, uh, now, uh, now you were much heavier there, weren't you? Yeah, I was about 220 there. I was, uh... Now, tell us about that photo, Gary. What, what does that mean to us? We were going to market. You'd been in the, you'd been shop. I know why you took the picture. I know why we took the picture, because yeah. you were making cracks about me at the marketplace in Trancas that you people were seeing me sitting in a shopping cart and such. And uh, I, never said I got I... word of that in Mexico, so we said, we'll fix his wagon. We'll send him a picture of me and Bobby shopping down there. And so he puts it on television. Now, were you, uh, now, but you and Robert Duvall, this, this, uh, I can't believe that they wouldn't be advertising this film. Yeah, I know. Well, I guess we're doing it now. Yeah. <laughs> Along with Eye the Tiger. And I had the tiger. No, what's what's the other? I had the tiger. What's I that about? I had the tiger. Comes out in November. Well, yeah. it's about uh, it's an an underdog picture, you mm -hmm. know, an under, under, underdog. I'm so nervous. I'm stuttering. No, no, you're fine. Just relax. Everything's fine. You're coming off very nicely. Okay, very nicely. Play an underdog. Yeah, play an underdog. Yeah, and it's a guy with a family, and he's uh, guy's back against the wall, and it's an action picture. We made a 40-day picture in 20 days. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Isn't it's it? fun. Yeah, There's yeah. something real exciting about you're it. You're in. You're out. You count your money on the plane. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're in, you're out, you're in. Yeah. Uh, you know who, you, they just had a nice shot of you. You know you, you look a little bit like now as Lloyd Bridges. You know, really? now that you're a little thinner, you look like Lloyd Bridges. Maybe we ought to go air up the tanks and get in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> Do some diving. <laughs> air up the tanks and yeah. get in the pool. Let's I like do that. Uh, so how, how are things back there in the neighborhood? I used to see you all the time down oh, there at the you know Trancas uh, restaurant. You, you know what happened? They, uh, the brothers, this is a wonderful little place on the corner. Pacific Coast PCH Highway. PCH and yeah. uh, Trancas. And it's a restaurant, and it's a bar, and there's a disco room in the back for the church students that go to Pepperdine. Mm -hmm. And then there's a rock and roll club, which anything can happen. And it's right there on the corner. Nice little place. Nice little yeah. beach restaurant well, bar. The family got in a dispute, one brother against the other brother, I guess, and they wouldn't renew the lease. So there we are, all of us out there with no place no to place go. No place to go. And they had a good breakfast there. Yeah, great food. Paul's been there. You've been there, as a matter of fact. We went there one day. Yeah, New Year's Day a couple of years ago. There's been a lot of outrageous people play in the room, too. Yeah. Mick Fleetwood. Yeah. Mick Fleetwood was just there. We just played together with Billy And Monday. this place is closed now. They won't reopen it? I don't know. Maybe you ought to take your show out there and do a local. All right. Do I'd like that. Well, this is, this is, if you're ever out that way, well, it's closed now, but you would have enjoyed yourself. Um, geez, I'm glad things are going so nicely for you. You Me look too. great, and you got two films coming out, and, uh, I and I hope... just finished Lethal Weapon with uh, Mel Gibson. So you're working more than ever. Yo! <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you again, Good Gary. You. Thank you very much for being here. Gary Busey, ladies and gentlemen. I have the scales. I'll save this a little later. I'll okay. weigh myself. It's good. Scales right. of justice. That's right. We'll let it uh, adjust to the proper barometric pressure. <laughs> As it must. And then, and then a little later, we'll find out if, in fact, I weigh you. I mean, it should be a, a decent scale. Look, should be accurate. It's a detecto. <laughs> Our first guest is a uh, talented actor who, uh, this man was nominated for an Academy Award, by the way for his role in the Buddy Holly story, and he has a brand new film out uh, called The Neon Empire, and that will premiere on Showtime uh, on December 3rd. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back here, Gary Busey. Oh, man, that smells great. You know, I gave him up. You, oh, you but, I, but I'll keep it, because I may start again. You need no, I, but depending oh, on my, we <laughs> depending on my weight, I may start again. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, nice to see you. Congratulations. Nice to see you. Have a seat. Thanks. You know, tell us, tell us, update us. It was almost a year ago, right? December 4th. December 4th. December 4th, last year, I hit the concrete going 45 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. on, on your bike? My motorcycle. Yeah. You weren't jogging. I wasn't jogging. Yeah. I hit a little bit of sand and gravel and went fishtail and hit my rear brake and I smashed in the concrete and I don't remember seven weeks of my life and uh, I was in the hospital for two months and they opened me up from here to here and split my skull and scraped the temporal side of my brain, drilled two holes here and I had blood shooting out this far. Jesus, it's, it's a shame you didn't bring any photos, Gary. As a matter of fact, God, could you be a little more graphic about that? <laughs> Okay, yeah, I can, I can. No, I can. now they, they actually opened your skull? Yeah. Now, now did they, uh... 
<laughs> and fill it full of what? Helium? Is that yeah. what happened? I see. Yeah. And helium and jelly beans. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember everything no, now. No. Now, uh, oh, come on, let's get serious. Oh, yeah, this, because is a, this is a late night well, you family were, you show. Were, uh, let me just ask you one more question okay. about the procedure. Okay. And then did they put bolts back into your skull to, so it grows and then they take those out or not? No, they sewed it up with hamster feet. <laughs> and it was, they just drilled hamster feet in my head. I don't know what they did. I don't remember. I wasn't aware. <laughs> Yes, I mean, these questions better get easier. Yeah, but but uh, the good news is everything is fine. But you were in, yeah, everything really, it was touch and go for about a day and a half, wasn't it? It's touch and, they gave me 48 hours to live and a 98% chance to die and said in 72 hours if he's alive he'll be a vegetable or a left-sided paraplegic and uh, they don't know how I got back to normal and I don't know, I don't know either. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, but Gary, going, I mean, last time I saw you I was on my motorcycle yeah. and you were turning left to go up the hill there. That's right, that's right. I and mean, I went, even before the accident. That was before the accident. Yeah, before the accident with you, normal was kind of a... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I'm much better now since the accident. Uh, but congratulations. Now, did you, were you aware that you might be slipping into darkness, as they say? Did you have any uh, out-of-body experiences yeah. or any of that kind of thing? I had some out-of-body experiences, and uh, I had some uh, metaphysical doctors and psychics call me up and told me they saw me flying around the universe with silver cords coming out of my body. Yeah. And that, laugh. Go ahead, laugh. <laughs> it's okay with me. You yeah. can laugh. Uh -huh. I'm well, well past the point of death right now. Did, uh, did this change your life? Is this a yeah. life-altering yeah. experience? When you're that close to death, and I'm serious about this, you get a whole new introspection and perspective about things, mm -hmm. and you begin to see yourself in better light. Mm -hmm. and, and what things are now no longer of any importance to you? Uh, probably doing late-night TV. No, hey, come on. <laughs> hey, hey, yeah. No, I love uh, this show. This I'll open up show. the other side of your head, son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, open up your head like a tank bullet. Where's Altman when you need yeah, it? It's Altman's act. Yeah. Come over here, I'll drop you like a bad habit. <laughs> but you, uh... No, no, no. I'm, I'm very happy to be alive. I wake up each day with a stamina that I didn't have before. What about your family? Are they, uh, everything has, must be much better now, don't you think? Yeah, it's much better, except when I get on the bike now, they go, what are you doing? Yeah, but you, you really don't get on the bike now, do you? I don't get on the bike too much, but when I do, I, we just raised $400,000 for muscular dystrophy with mm -hmm. Malcolm Forbes and David Crosby. All right. And, and, uh, that was a California Motorcycle Association, but I'm working with Bell Helmets on uh, talking about a design of a helmet that's aerodynamic and it has peripheral vision, so when you turn and look in this lane, you st I can still see the audience. Yeah. So you don't take your eyes off the road because a motorcycle has no relationship with gravel, sand, rock, mm -hmm oil or water so you now before you were saying you didn't really want you you felt like people should choose whether they want to have the helmet or not and you yeah. obviously chose not to use a helmet I chose and not now to you're use saying one. that maybe you would you would wear one no, I think that there should be an education for helmets there should mm -hmm. be skill tests given by law and if you make a certain amount of points or don't make a certain amount of points you're supposed to wear one yeah I really I, you know I if I'd wear one if they could make one that had hair on it so it looked like you weren't wearing one I'd, I've got one in the back room. <laughs> it's, so periodically it's, you can comb your you helmet. You can comb it and you say, look at that guy, it's Michael Landon on a motorcycle. Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> that's not bad. Dennis, this brain surgery I, works. I think surgery. you're funnier since I the am, accident. I am, I'm a lot funnier. <laughs> all right. Look what they're putting up there. We'll be right back here with uh, Gary Busey. <laughs> here and uh what, what the heck were we talking about oh i know you know the pros and cons of junior high football no huh <laughs> <laughs> the pros and cons of junior high football well, now what does that mean that means what's good about it what's bad about it you know <laughs> uh, you wear a helmet when you play football i think yeah it's uh you know what uh, congratulations on the success of this movie the bear that's really terrific the bear yeah the bear? Right. It's like the number one box office deal now again. What are you, where are you living? <laughs> Isn't what? it? I, that's not me. That's a real bear. The bear you're talking about is, is about Coach Bryant. I wrestled a bear. You could have had a V8. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Now yeah. that was, yeah, I remember. I wrestled a bear. Sorry. I wrestled a bear and it wasn't easy. This was a stunt that Bear Bryant did in yeah, college? Yeah, that's how he got his name. Mm -hmm. uh, you got it in the Depression. They sent these bears around and you wrestled them. To make money and uh you, the way you got in for free is say it i'll wrestle the bear mm -hmm. and so they put his name down and he went in to wrestle the bear and they filmed me wrestling a bear what kind of bear was it it was a uh 
brown bear, and he weighed about 750 pounds, oh. and his name was uh, Teddy. Teddy. And, and, and how they got you, this is, this is to this, how they got you to know the bear, you put a piece of candy in your mouth, and you stood up to the bear, like this, and the bear would go, well, yeah, yeah. That's how they sounded. And they would lick, you would lick the candy out of your mouth with the tongue, they would, poof, wow, like yeah. this. Yeah. And then the trainer said to me, now say, I said, what? Say, and the bear will get up and come over and dance with you. Uh -huh. But first, let's do this. And they took two big turkey necks, <laughs> and they rubbed them all over my body, and turkey fat all over my you body. You know what this is sounding? No, I wasn't naked. I had on overalls and a shirt, and uh, I said, what now? Say, break up? Uh -huh. The bear heard it. The bear goes, well, yeah, yeah. And he stood up, and he came at me. And so I went to dance with the bear, and the bear just went, Splat! Had me down and started, and this tongue is this long, going all over oh, me, man. and I'm going, oh, yo, oh my gosh, it's a computer dating. Yeah. And I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, like a dog, I'm trying to get out from under yeah. the bear, and I get out from under the bear, and all of a sudden I'm itching, uh -huh. and I look under my shirt, and I'm, I got welts on me this big, as big as pancakes, and I'm all of a sudden, I, the trainer says, oh, I know what's wrong with him, you know, he's allergic to bear slobber. I said, what? He's allergic to bear spit. We'll have to surround him with saran wrap. So they took me down, they wrapped me in saran wrap, took me back up, the bear saw me, went, well, yeah, yeah. there was a guy with turkey fat on him, and they said, okay, Gary, this time lay down, under, the bear's gonna sit down, lay down on his legs, and he'll put his hands over you, and then when you say, <laughs> he'll, he'll start licking and you start running. And I said, oh, God, this is a horrible computer date. And so I got down and I said, I, I, said, uh, I, looked, I looked to my left under the bear where the bear's legs are between the bear's legs. All right, legs. Gary, watch it. Well, anyway, there was something coming at me. Oh, no. And I, went, I didn't say break up. I just scrambled like an otter out of there. I never knew. <laughs> Man moved so fast and the bear was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the truth. That's the last time I had anything to do with the bear, but the bear you're talking about is not my movie. Yeah. Anton, Anton, what does this whole thing sound like? No, 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 no. Oh, good, Anton. No, no. A party at Wendell's. <laughs> there. Thank God. Jeez. Wendell, Bill Wendell, our announcer. I'm sure I did the, other the other whole movie? damn thing. What's the other movie? The other movie, what? Besides it's the about bear. a bear. It's, it's called but, The Bear. Yeah, I know that one, but the other, you said two movies. You said The Bear. The Bear. And then another movie. One of your movies? Yeah. You said I had two hits out. Oh, oh, uh, Neon uh, City. Neon, Neon uh, Empire. Neon Empire, Empire. Yeah, yeah, Empire. yeah. That's all about Las Vegas, right? <laughs> well, I tell you what it's about. It's about, it's a Americana, uh, Smithsonian kind of docudrama about how Las Vegas was built. It's Las Vegas in 1938. And, uh, Bugsy it's, Siegel? Yeah, yeah. It's when those guys came east and discovered this town with one casino in it and said, we can build a gambling place here and make an yeah. empire out of it. It's, it's a fascinating story. That. story. That's very it's, exciting. Do you like Las Vegas? Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, yeah, I, I like, like it. I, well, I, I, guess so, I think it's, what it is, it's an I guess interesting it is. experience. Sure. Everything's relative, yeah. but I've, it goes from 1938 to 1989, and I'm the one that owns the only casino there, so I'll go head to head with Bugsy Siegel. And, and it turned out pretty well for you? Turned out real well for everybody. The you know, star of the show is Las Vegas. Sitting here talking to you is just amazing that you went through what you went through. It's a, I know. Isn't it funny? <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> it's a terrific uh, testament to the resiliency of the human spirit and body. Well, it had a lot to do with the boss. Yeah, well, I don't mean Bruce Springsteen, yeah. but I mean the boss. <laughs> Bruce is a good guy. No one means a good rocker. But uh, I, I didn't have anything to do with it, and the doctors don't know what happened, and here I am with you. Well, and, good for you. Congratulations. You know, I just really feel good about it. Like a party you. at Wendell's, Anton. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, thanks Anton. Uh, uh, good to see you. And the movie uh, it debuts. When does it debut here, uh, Gary? December third. December fourth. It's uh, the Neon Empire. Gary Busey, ladies and gentlemen. Good to see Who's on the show? Gary Busey is on the show. Who else is on the show? Who else is on the big show? Who else do we... Hey, huh? Who, what? Hello, what? Testing, where? Are we on the air? Hello, who's on the show? Delamitri. Delamitri. And Dawn Riley. 
sail around diamond. the world, yeah, on an yeah. all-female crew on a sailing ship, yeah. And if you're just joining us a minute ago, we chatted with my mom back there in Indianapolis. Mom decided it's time to point out the fact that there have been killer tornadoes. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Our first guest tonight was nominated for an Academy Award for his role in the uh, Buddy Holly story. And tomorrow night he will be the host of the second International Rock Awards. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Gary Busey. Gary? Nice to have you back. How you feeling? Nice tie. Thank you very much. You, you have one of those little cowboy deals there. This is called the bowler. You're, you're kind of a cowboy yourself, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, when I was born in Texas and grew up in Oklahoma, and my dad's American Indian, my mother's Irish. Yeah. Yeehaw! Do you, you get along well with your folks? Yeah, I get along real well with yeah, them. You have a close relationship with them? A close relationship yeah, with them. Yeah. I'm 45, going on two. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, what was life like for you there when you were growing up? Well, I worked on a ranch. Worked in the hay fields, hauled hay. Yeah. I worked cattle, Brahma and Charlay. I rode a teenage Brahma bull when I was about 14 and got thrown 50 feet into the trees. Wow. I went to a cattle auction once, and uh, you don't ever want to do... You, if you ever go to a cattle auction, you don't even want to move. You want to sit there. Because if you move just to get a fly, you'll buy something. I, yeah. bought three Ang I bought three Angus bulls when I was 15 and didn't know it. <laughs> I said, three Angus bulls, the kid in them overalls. And I was going... Does that mean? Did I buy three? You bought them. You'll get up here and get them. And I went, well, wait. And the Anguses are looking at me like, mmm. And I said, wait, I was scratching a fly. No, you bought the three bulls, son. You're going to have to take them home with you now. So, but I didn't have to because they were laughing at me. Yeah, how, how expensive were they? They were pretty expensive. They are yeah. something like they, they buy them by the pound. Mm -hmm. And these weren't little guys. Yeah. These were big Angus bulls. And, and Angus, they're, they're used to breed uh, beef cattle. Is that what they're, they're primarily used for? All bulls are used to breed beef cattle. But these guys are meat. <laughs> Where are you from? I don't, I don't, I don't know. You're from Indiana. Yeah. No, the deal is that uh, they're, they're, to, they're bred to eat. Yeah. I mean, you eat them. And uh, not, nothing against the vegetarians, but they're bred to eat and yeah. uh, have fun in the pastures. Yeah. And go down and smell one flower at a time. But I had probably the heart. You know, you're bringing up memories that uh, one of the hardest jobs I ever had on the farm was dealing with a goat and three Chester white hogs. And they're, they're a lot smaller than those Angus bulls, but I never had so much problem. And what was the job, I'm sorry? You do what now? The goat and the, the hogs? What? Yeah, there's a goat named Charlie. Right. Billy Goat. And he lived there for, he was there long before I was, and he lived for dinner time because my uncle had these big three Chester white hogs, right. and they'd run them in there to eat. Oi, 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 oi. And they'd come in, and I'd load the trough up with corn cobs and, and conglomerate of soup, and oh, it was good looking stuff, but you wouldn't want to eat it. You could smell, right. it for, smell it for blocks away. And the goat would come in the back end. And then my uncle Buddy said, okay, Gary, I want to get out there and keep that goat from getting those hogs. And I said, I was 14, I said, what? Get the goat from, keep the goat away from the hogs. Because he'll, he'll try to get up and penetrate those hogs. <laughs> try and get up and do, and do what? <laughs> this is true. I'm not making this well, up. What, did it, what was penetrate. the word? Penetrate. 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 Yeah, yeah. And I said, I said what, what do you mean? He said, well, you'll see. You better get in there now. Yeah. And so I, there was mud, and I had on boots, and he's like, <laughs> walking out across the deal and the hogs are just go, 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 and grabbing each other's corn cobs and <laughs> blowing bubbles in the slop and I'm watching it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Charlie's back there going, <laughs> he's lined up on one of them about 60 feet away <laughs> and he goes <laughs> like a bottle rocket, just yeah. <laughs> like that. And Uncle Buddy says, get in front of Charlie. And, so, <laughs> I'm running out, and the goat just takes a side step and goes around me and jumps up and as he jumps up, he's 10 feet away from the hog with like this, and he runs into the hog and goes, whop, 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 and he's off and back to get the next one. And Uncle Buddy says, Gary, Charlie's penetrating the girls. <laughs> I said, okay, I'll get him. And so he came again. I tried to get him again. And he goes, he ran around me. And so he's, Gary, you're not getting Charlie. Meanwhile, everyone's laughing up there, and I don't know why. Uh -huh. I'm there for five minutes. I'm going, 
<laughs> and Charlie looks over at me like it's the first time he saw me. <laughs> and he took right off at me and hit me right here. <clears throat> and I did a flip in the mud, and he went, Wah! went right back and kept it up. Wow. And I limped over and leaned on the trough and watched the girls eat as Charlie did his work. And they didn't even know he was there. Uh -huh. And he lived for dinner time. Uh -huh. So this was a job that lasted one day. Oh, man. And then they moved me to the hayfields. But it was a hard job. It was uh, to keep a goat from penetrating hogs is not anything I'd recommend to anybody. <laughs> He's even had brain surgery. Now there, <laughs> this yeah. is long before yeah. the motorcycle but, came. But out. now, what what is the what exactly is the problem there? I mean, what with who? With the, the goats and the hogs. I mean, what what's the what's the ultimate fear? What are we worried about there? I guess the progeny. I'm not sure what it would be. I don't know if anything is. Uh, I don't know if there's any zygotes that come out of this or not. Yeah. Or embryonic gestures of uh, of, of, of <laughs> extraplanetary animals. <laughs> But the goat was on and off instantly. I know, and the, you and covered the girls, that. I know. The girls well, didn't we all even know he was there. No, I know. Yeah. You, why do you know? You weren't I mean, there. I mean, I've got some all, pictures. We, we all know the feeling is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, we, we, uh, we, we have to do a commercial, and then, uh, then we'll be right back. Something with my how are you feeling, by the way? How long ago has it been since you had your accident? Uh, December 4th, 1988. So we're uh, good. close I'm not to two years to ago so. then. Yeah, close to two years. I'm still in recovery because yeah. it's uh, it's quite an injury. It was nasty. There, there were reports, and I guess you would know better than anybody else, that you almost slipped into darkness. I did. I yeah. went to the other side. I had plates of glass come up in front of me, abalone light, and I was uh, out of my body and had uh, quite some experiences there. But... Uh, my right and left side of my brain were out of sync for about yeah. seven months. I went through dyslexia, and I'm not joking. Right. I know this and is... Everything's right. now, though, the wiring is back where it the ought to be? The wiring is back where it ought to be, where it should be. See, but, but aren't you amazed at the resiliency of the human system? I, you know what? That's one of the things the surgeon said to me. They said, you had such a great element of denial in your system of your injury that that's what took you through the hard part, mm -hmm. that you denied the fact that you were hurt that bad. And I just learned last Easter my own self-recognition that I was really hurt more than I yeah. thought I was. Now, is this denial, is this all subconscious, or is it... It's con you... It was conscious yeah. on me, because I wouldn't... Go I didn't want to stay in there. I, I passed a 200-point test and went through a five-point interview with them, five questions that they gave me, my attention span, my verbal use, and my use of my temporal side of my brain, where expression and creativity come from, and how to stay in touch with my own time element and not go too fast so my body couldn't react to it. And I went through all of that. Yeah. And I recognized it in Easter that, uh, whoa, I was hurt much more than I thought I was. Now I'm working with head trauma people and going back to yeah, that. Now what about the helmet issue for people who ride motorcycles? Well, I'm working on the endorsement and the design of a helmet that I'm going to recommend because I don't want kids to go to the store and get refried brains. I'd mm -hmm. rather get them re refried beans. Yeah. And uh, I really think that they should see better and hear better and have some airflow. But, but originally you felt like it should be left up to choice. Yeah, if I you want to have a helmet, well, fine. I'm if not, you don't want to have a I'm helmet. not saying it should be a law. I'm saying it's up to you. But I'm recommending them. I'm telling them to wear those darn things. And I get on my Harley and ride out in front of the street without a helmet. And I go, wait a minute. And I go right back in the garage. Yeah. And I got a helmet, I wear this like a bowling ball, and I say, I can't do that, so I'm waiting on the design to come. I'm working with a guy from MIT and Frank Lloyd Wright and some other, and Bell Helmets. I'm sorry, you're, you're working, Frank Lloyd Wright is helping you design a helmet? <laughs> you see. Where you are know, you from? We're, we're trying you to... You want me to do a Crispin Glover on you? Well, no, please don't. <laughs> because I, I think you might be able to hurt me. Uh, no, we're no. trying to get a helmet law for this show, as a matter of fact. Well, yeah. I was going to wear one out here. Let's, let's talk about this uh, uh, International Rock Awards. Oh, that's going to be wonderful. It, what, is it a good deal? Yeah, it's a good deal. They're, look, they're looking at everybody around the world. That's an international theme, and mm -hmm. they have people like David Bowie, Elton John, Eric Clapton, Bonnie Raitt, Errol Smith, and a lot of people that are brand new, mm -hmm. and they're rec being recognized and given an award. It's tomorrow night on ABC. ABC. Is yeah. this live? Where are they holding these? Yeah. Where is it? It's in here? Yeah, here at Lexington. In New, in New York? In New York, yeah. in an armory and yeah. on Lexington Street or somewhere. And there, we went rehearsing yeah. today. Sam Kennison and I are co-hosting. Oh, it. man. Well. And so it's, uh, <laughs> look out Houston. Yeah. And it's live and in color. <laughs> you know? uh, and, uh, and, and what do you give out? What, if you win one of these international rock deals, what do you get? Do you get a little, uh, little statue, a little, what do you get? You get a statue of Elvis Presley uh -huh. and about 14 cases of condoms. <laughs>
You can bleep that if you want. To. <laughs> uh, and, and this, I'm kidding. That's a joke. Yeah. This is a joke show. There is no statue of Elvis. There's Thank a you. statue uh, of Elvis. <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's easy. I know. No, it's stupid. It's no, no. I can't. Uh, but let, let's talk about the, the movie now, Predator 2. Yeah, Predator 2. Number 2. Now, number oh, 1, what was boy. number 1? What was the first Predator? That was in a, well, the first Predator is an outer world life force that comes and lands on this planet. They've been doing it for 700 years, mm -hmm. and they do it to hunt and uh, capture the biggest hunter mm -hmm. of man there is here. That's their, that's their game, their athletic game. Right. It's a trophy. Right. They take them back to their own uh, solar yeah. system? Back they take to them own... back. They strip their skeleton down and hang them up on the wall and look, ooh, that was nice. We got that on Uranus. Mm -hmm. Ooh, look at this from Pluto. Right. Look at that from Earth right there. Look at those guys from Earth. And the first Predator movie, they, one of them stalked and eliminated a special forces team. And there were two survivors. Right. And uh, this time it's 1997. It's Los Angeles. It's 110 degrees all over the world. There's well, no hey, more global, global warming. Warfare. No more global warfare, but oh, global, global warming. Global warming, sure. And the guy You know, I was there. just in California like last week. It was pretty warm when I was it out was, there. It was, but it's not 110. <laughs> no, but I'm saying I think there might be something to this global there warming. There is something to it. Because when we get to the there. valley, I'm telling you, it was like there 85. Well, I'm working on environmental processes, too. 85? Yeah. Did you see the predator at Lucky's Market? <laughs> are we going to look at some, are we gonna look at some uh, film of this? Some, uh, we have a clip of the movie? You don't have a clip? Come on, let's see. Uh, let's what are we doing here? Oh, thanks. What are we doing here? Uh, what, uh, We're having fun. Uh, do we, we don't have film clips. Well, it's going to be December 1st, 1990. All That's right. when it comes out. And you and who else in this? Danny Glover, Ruben Blaze, and Maria Cachito Alonso. Y you know, you, you look great. You look thank great. You. You, yeah, well, <laughs> right up to uh, that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And I'm, I'm glad that the recovery is, uh, I would guess, essentially complete, huh? Well, it's just about complete. I'm not counting all my eggs yet. Yeah. But yes, it is. I'm doing, I'm doing quite better. Great. I put my shoes on the right feet now. I used to put Good the left you. one on the right one and the right one on the left. Nice to see you. Thank you very nice much for being here. Gary Busey, we'll be right back. First guest is a talented actor whose latest film is called Point Break, and it opens across the country this Friday. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the program the always peppy Gary Busey. How's your summer going? Pretty good. Look at my shoes. Kiowa. Yeah, what's the deal on that? Do you, did you... <laughs> the Kiowa Indian fancy dancing shoes. Wow. Those are, those are beautiful. Are those the authentic thing or something you got at the airport gift shop? <laughs> you better watch out. Man. What? I'm the authentic thing. These are authentic. Okay. I don't shop okay. at the airport gift shop. Right. Now, but from what part of the country do you get those? Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Oh, good mm -hmm. for you. Uh, and uh, do, you, do you see these uh, Indians often? Do you spend time with them? Yes, I do spend time with them. When I'm in Oklahoma, they're there. Good they for run you. gift shops, not at the airport. No? no. Um, Tulsa County. Yeah, yeah. How you been? I've been good. How are you? I'm all right. You know, the last time... Uh, I like your tie. Well, thank you very much. I got this at an airport gift shop. <laughs> yeah. I don't. Uh, the last time you were here, we were talking about uh, you played football in uh, high school, college? High school and college, yeah. yeah. And... Uh, um, what, where did, what kind of a student were you? Where did you go to school? What was that like uh, for you? Uh, well, it was, I really went to college to play football. Yeah. And uh, I went to junior college in Kansas, Coffeyville, Kansas, and to Kansas State College and Oklahoma State University. <laughs> and, uh, kind of a student I was. I liked uh, first aid classes and I liked speech classes. You liked classes. first aid classes? First aid. Were, you, were you thinking of going into medicine? No. They were just easy, easy things to do. Wrap oh. things around legs. <laughs> you know, and pump air into people's chest and act like they were drowned. And uh, tape up fingers and do fake burns and uh -huh. uh, speech classes. I love speech. Yeah. And uh, as a matter of fact, speech classes were probably the most adventurous really? things that I'd done in college. I went to college five and a half years. Yeah. 
three of them. Three colleges. Three, three different colleges. And uh, speech was your favorite, and, and you said more, more exciting, more adventurous? Why? Yeah, well, it's because of what we did in the speech class. You just didn't get up and give speeches. They had a thing called show and tell. Oh, and that's very something. advanced. <laughs> What's hey, we're, we're buddies. We, we've know. known each other for a long I know, time. I know, I know. Yeah. So let's not, let's not lose it over yeah, a vast no, adventure. No, exactly. The show and tell class I was in, uh, you want to hear this? this I is, do want to hear it. Uh, we had a defensive end. A lot of football players were in the class and some of the cheerleaders, and it was an easy class to have, an easy credit to get, because you just went and did a little speech and mm -hmm. left for the next class. Show and tell came up, and this guy came in, Galen from Caney, Kansas, and he brought in a paper bag and some newspapers and a big box, and he put the box down and spread the newspapers out on a table with a sink, because it was a chemistry class, too. Mm -hmm. And he said, my folks run a rabbit farm in Caney, Kansas. And he opened up this box and pulled out this big, beautiful white rabbit with red eyes, and, <laughs> and the rabbit was like this, and everyone's going, oh, oh, look at the rabbit. And the football players are going, good gosh, that's a nice-looking rabbit. Look at that thing. <laughs> And he's, he's spreading out the newspapers and going, now, nah, at the rabbit ranch, rabbit farm, we uh, raise rabbits, we breed them for Easter, when kids want little rabbit pets, and he's opening up a paper bag, and he pulls out this leather thing, whaps it down, and said, and also, and put, pulls out a board and a little box of nails and a hammer, and said, also, we, uh, my folks uh, are into the pelleting business, which is purses, uh, handbags is a purse, and uh, muffs, and so uh, what we do is, we uh, utilize the rabbits to make these fur garments. And everyone's going, what's going on here? <laughs> and Galen picks up the rabbit by the back legs and says, now, this is rabbit, this is a mature rabbit, this rabbit is ready to be exposed to the fur business. Picks up the rabbit by the back legs and goes, boom! Oh. Right behind the ears and the rabbit goes, like that. He goes, the rabbit is dead. Walks the rabbit down, opens the leather patch, pulls out a knife. <laughs> Pulls it out, stuffs the stuff in the uh, his paper bag, and then takes the rabbit by the back legs and the skin and goes... <laughs> and goes, the carcass can be used for rabbit stew. Boom, puts that in the paper sack, puts the pelt Jeez. down, nails it on the board, puts salt, and, puts salt on it and holds it up and goes, and there's a rabbit pelt. Wow. That was, a, that was my first show and tell experience. Right. And it, it, did, it, did it just sicken everyone? Oh, yeah, there were people... <laughs> there were yeah. people that... They were out of the class, and everyone was like that. And but Galen does that every afternoon. He went home from school and took care of. Uh, well, sure, that, that was to, to him. It wasn't that big a deal. It was no, just it wasn't. part of it. It was his just life. part of the. Yeah. It was the job training. Kind of gruesome. Uh, let's do a uh, huh? Hey, hey, do you like fireworks? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We got something for you. Hang around. Hang around. Hang around. Uh, we'll do a commercial. We'll be right back with Gary Busey. Perfect. Show and tell. Who sang that? Uh, I can't remember. Who the guy that scanned the rabbit, probably. That's yeah. Right. So, uh, <laughs> oh, uh, on the program tonight, we have uh, Gary Busey and uh, Richard Thompson and uh, Kevin Pollack. And, uh, and tell us what you did for show and tell. <sighs> oh, mine was pretty simple. I made a P-51 Mustang, a monogram Mustang airplane. Yeah. And uh, my favorite movie, one of my favorite movies when I was a kid was Flying Leathernecks with John Wayne. And I love the way those planes that fly through the air and blow up. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to manifest this vision in my speech class. And I got a, my P-51 Mustang with the decals and the paint on it. And I glued, taped a M-80 underneath it. <laughs> and I got two grasshoppers from the yard and brought the grasshoppers in and stuffed them in the cockpit. And, said, and then did this little speech and went, and here's how they do it in the movies. <laughs> <laughs> and threw it out and went beep, 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 and boom right in the middle of the speech class and blew the grasshoppers in the plane everywhere and uh, the speech teacher said you are going to be suspended from playing football uh -huh. and I was 
kind of dismayed. I didn't get suspended, but I got removed from the class. Yeah. The well, you know, it's dangerous. I mean, strictly speaking, well, that's the, adventure. That's but, but, what yeah, we're but this about. is a speech class, and it's for credit, and, and uh, the, the kids Show pay tuition. Tell. They don't they don't want to come in here and have was explosives this, was, detonated in I, their speech class. You asked me if I like fireworks. Yeah. You asked me about show and tell, and show and tell was something you show and you tell about. Yeah. I think, so I think we all kind of have a grip on the concept <laughs> of show and tell. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, David Letterman. <laughs> I, you know, I think some of us, uh, I don't want to say that. Go ahead. I, it might on. be an indictment on the Kansas junior college system. <laughs> but some of us got show and tell behind us like in the second grade. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah. We should do some of that. You should have show and tell segment on your show. <laughs> yeah. You know, we did. We've had kids from area schools come in. And it's very show cute. And tell. Yeah, show and tell. Now, uh, let's talk about your film. You got two big films. Is Point Break, what is that? Point Break. Surfers and bank robbers and FBI guys, and it's an advanced adventure and adrenaline. Yeah. It's just a wonderful, unpredictable course that you don't know where you're going next. Yeah. And it's uh, This is good ride. for you. I like the idea of surfers and bank robbers. You're, you're, I mean, no, I'm serious. Your, your energy and your presence uh, would be suitable for either. Well, see, what they did, they gave me the role of a guy, a Greek guy that's 55 years old, and it's over the hill, a burnout FBI that has the mm -hmm. FBI agent that has the theory on who's robbing the banks. Right. But no one listened to me. Right. So they give me a blue flame rookie and that's Keanu Reeves, and together we infiltrate the Surf Kingdom to find out who does it. Is this, is this a good movie? Have you seen it? Yes, I, I've seen it, and yeah. I like it. Yeah. I like it. It's, it's, is and it? I don't, uh, the last movie I was talking about that I liked was Lethal Weapon, that I promoted mm -hmm. about, you know? Yeah. And I do like this. It, I wasn't sure whether I would or not, and I was really, okay, let's see this. I hope this is good enough to talk about. And yes, it is. It was fun to see. Yeah. And Patrick does his own skydiving. And this guy does ballet in the air at uh, thousands and thousands of feet. And when does this thing open up? When? Yeah. Friday. Wow, so it's right out there competing with all the other summer blockbusters. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't look at it like competition. It's just another well, way to Well, fighting for its uh, niche in the movie market. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then you have another one with uh, Dolly Parton. Yeah. yeah. Now, what is that one about? It's about a lady who has a western swing band, which is the sleep of the wheel. They're not a sleep of the wheel. That's, that's the, the name of the, of the group, yeah. yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> She's traveling around and she meets this guy that becomes her manager and her lover and then he beats her up and gets drunk and has a father that spits in his face and it's a TV movie for yeah. NBC next November. It's oh, called it's a TV movie. Wild yeah. Texas Wind. Yeah. yeah, that would also be good for show and tell, that little story. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll work that. <laughs> no, you... What? When did you decide to turn on me? We used never, to be, we used never, to be never. pals. We're pals. Uh, okay. And, hey, uh, <laughs> How you feeling after everything fine after your uh, motorcycle problem? You know what? The motorcycle problem is behind me, but I am standing behind the mandatory helmet law. I'm working with a man to design. A man is designing a helmet that you can see and feel the air and uh, hear better. Larry Bernstein, who graduated from MIT, he's an inventor. And I was wrong when I came out and said, never mind, helmets have pro-choice, mm -hmm. freedom, freedom of choice. Mm -hmm. I really believe that if you're going to ride a motorcycle down the street going 85 miles an hour, you wear a helmet. Mm -hmm. You wear helmets when you play football, when you ride bicycles, when you jump over those fences, when you're riding a horse. And it's just stupid not to wear a helmet when you're on a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. And I'm speaking for the... I'm, I'm speaking for the government of California and the government of Texas with Governor Ann Richards and Pete Wilson. And so I'm very much... Uh, supporting the helmet law yeah you you just about Absolutely. left us when you had your little record yes you? i did i left that? my body i left my body and went to that yeah. room of the white how long ago light. was that it's been a couple december of years. 4th 1988 yeah, i'm glad everything's good for you well me too uh, i'm glad i got to say that yeah and and we're gonna oh you want to hang around we're gonna try and get fireworks well i'll get my airplane we'll glue it on the <laughs> no no let's uh let's we have to pause oh, here no, for stage oh, no. no just stay right there and then we'll uh go we'll be back show tonight kevin pollack uh, very funny man you ever seen kevin pollack work no i don't he's think he's a funny so. guy and uh, of course gary Busey is here for the fireworks uh tomorrow on the show uh ed o'neill will be on the show and uh, comedian tom kenny will be here on the show that'll be tomorrow on the big show you know over the weekend uh of the fourth of july rather some some people had the fireworks out where i was 
illegal fireworks. And like at one o'clock in the morning, they're, they're setting them off, and you hear the whistle, and then the explosion, and then the giggling, and, and then like the from laughing. Mexico? Huh? Like from Mexico? Those oh. kind of fireworks? Mexico fireworks? I, I don't know. I didn't get the nation of origin, Gary. <laughs> They make them themselves, I uh, Anyway, uh, so I'm in bed. It's like 1 o'clock in the morning, and then uh, this goes on for like 45 minutes, and then suddenly I hear somebody scream, Call the fire department! <laughs> and I think that they have set my house on fire. So, so now I have to go out on the deck in my pajamas. Really? <laughs> you, you sleep in pajamas still? No, I'm just laughing like I got a deck. <laughs> like you got a what? <laughs> <laughs> But these, these idiots out there yeah. set fire to their own damn car. That's what was burning. On purpose? Or was it the fireworks exploded in the car? I think, yeah, yeah. It, accidentally. Accidentally. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and punch me now and get it over. Just go ahead. Turn, no, 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 no. Turn, we're turn my lights out right no, now. Just go. Friends, no. All right. Here we go. Now we're going to get you some fireworks. But, you know, that's a true story. You're keeping a diary. What do I get? An area code? Uh, this is, uh, Felix Grucci. I don't think this went through, did it? Well, we'll see. We'll get some fireworks. And if this doesn't work, we're calling John Gotti. Are we going to see the fireworks? Just... No, we're just, we're just going to hear them. Hear them. <laughs> Why didn't you come to the meeting today? You know all. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Oh, my God. I hope there hasn't been an explosion. Man, this is smooth as silk. How did I get this job? Okay, here we go. Yeah, in the middle of the night, 1 o'clock in the morning. Smoke, you can smell that gunpowder coming through the windows, and then a few minutes later, their car's on fire. You can see the flames and the fire trucks rolled up. Where do you live? <laughs> oh, well, here, get a pencil. <laughs> Fireworks by Grucci. Oh, hi, uh, Felix. It's me, Dave, again. Dave, how are you? Good. Felix, listen, I'm here with uh, Gary Busey. Gary, how are you? I'm fine, Felix. How are you? Good. Can't complain. Good. How was your 4th of July? Great. Uh, Felix. <laughs> you ever skin a rabbit, Felix? Uh, not lately, Dave, no. All right, now, Felix, are you, are you ready with the uh, pyrotechnics there? Uh, yeah, we've got uh, three big barrages for you, Dave. Okay, I'm going to put the phone down so nothing happens. You go ahead and we'll just wait for you. Okay, here we go. This one's for you. Felix. Happy Fourth of July. Thank you. That was that was more than we uh, hoped for. Thank you. <laughs> thank You're you, Felix. Welcome. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you. Bye -bye. We look forward to your show. All right. Thanks. Bye bye. Uh, what do you say? It sounded like he was opening a can of peanut brittle. Oh, it's it? Yeah. Peanut I don't brittle. hear any big explosions oh, there with it. That's what that sounded like. What? A bad diet. That's what that sounded like. Okay. Well, we'll, uh, we'll do a commercial. Gary, you have to leave now. I'm sorry. I guess so. And we'll be back with Richard Thompson. Gary Ryder. Gentlemen, we got a pretty good program. Gary Busey will be with us, and uh, also Orville Redenbacher will be here, and Charlie Watts of the Rolling Stones will be joining us. That's not a bad show. Charlie Watts will not be here. Charlie Watts will not be here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. Charlie Watts will be here. He will. What? He won't. He no, won't he be won't. here. He Charlie will not Watts be here. will not be he here, won't. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>
Uh, so let's begin the program. What do I do now? Oh, here's a good friend, Paul Schaefer, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Right there, Paul Schaefer. What? Thanks a lot. Hey, Dave. When I, Ron, I, let me I'm ask. Positive. I saw Charlie Watts here about a half an hour ago. Mm, he was he was billed to appear. He will no longer appear. Will not be on the program. Will not be on the program. Going to be on the program. Will not be on the program tonight. No. Right. I have a question though. Yeah. Sure. When Ross Perot dropped out this morning. Yeah. Did he look tight? Was he tight? What? <laughs> I mean, I mean uptight. Was he uptight? Did he look uptight? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's yeah. the question. Yeah, he looked uptight. Okay, Why? Okay, that's what I want to know. Why? Well, not tight. Yeah. Uptight. That's right. I meant to say uptight. Yeah. I said tight. Paul, what do you do when you don't have material? You just... Huh? What? Yes, that's right. Well... <laughs> you better get... <laughs> yeah. All right. We have a wonderful show. Gary Busey is here. And uh, Orville Redenbacher, who, by the way, is from my home state of Indiana. Is that... Yeah, is that that's so? right. Yep. <laughs> You know, you could at least care. <laughs> you, you could pretend to care. Uh, and then uh, Charlie Watts, I'm confused. Charlie Watts will be here. Charlie Watts will not be here. Oh, Charlie. <laughs> also, ladies and gentlemen, when you get that television show and you have no material, sound effects. Sound effects. There you go. Yeah. Uh, well, today, uh, tomorrow is the last day of the big Democratic National Convention right over there. Today is the last day? Yeah, at the uh, Madison Square Garden. So we're going to show you now a day in the life of the convention. You know what would help here, Paul? What's that? Some music, a little theme music. Yeah. We're going to show you... You, you I don't... thought I'd fade under, yeah. and then you would kind That's of right. go into the oh, comedy. Oh, I see. Well, I wasn't here at rehearsal. Oh, yeah. Neither was I. <laughs> I, I was rehearsing you, with Charlie Watts. I thought you were worried about waking Charlie Watts, who's yeah. home right now, watching him not being here on the yes. show. Well, I'm worried about that, too. Uh, Charlie Watts is uh, playing jazz now. That is a correct. A lot of jazz, uh, a lot of uh, really good kind of, as, they, as the kids say, cool jazz. I went to see him perform yeah. last night. Oh, really? Yeah, at the Blue Note Club, and he does a tribute to Charlie Parker. Uh -huh. It's quite wonderful. Well, maybe he'll do that on the show for us tonight. Doc? <laughs> you know, Doc is here. <laughs> Guess again. Doc is not here. Hey, the audience both sickened and delighted there. We have a, uh, I told you about this, a great show. Gary Busey is here, Orville Redenbacher is here, and Charlie Watts... Will not be ...is here. not here, ladies and gentlemen. We'll do a commercial and then begin the big program. Come on! Yeah. Let me just say this one thing about Charlie Watts. If you had to pick a Rolling Stone that you didn't want to show up, I guess it would be Charlie. <laughs> would, would that be fair? Well, one would want any member of the Rolling of course, Stones to show up. that's what I'm saying. But if you didn't really want one to show up, he'd be the one you didn't want to show up, right? I can, I cannot <laughs> condone that type of a statement, no. We're I just cannot. disappointed that he's not here because he was here. That's the sad thing about it, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, maybe some of you bumped into him in line. He was here, and then at the last minute he said, I'm going somewhere else. That's as close as I get to a British accent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Be good. Anyway, Charlie ain't here. Maybe another day? Well, we hope Maybe so. another lifetime. <laughs> huh? We hope. We hope that maybe another day. Yeah, we just, there was a problem, a little... Was it a bug or a snafu? Paul? Well, it was a communication problem. Or was it a glitch? Uh, problem. Yeah. problem with communication. The end result is Charlie ain't here. That was a great movie. Did you see that Chevy Charlie Chase, Goldie Hawn? Oh, what a Hysterical. fabulous movie that was. Uh, let's do our top ten list, ladies and gentlemen, and then get on with...
We don't need Charlie Watts to have real TV fun. Uh, the category from the Home Office in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. Top 10 reasons Ross Perot dropped out of the presidential race. I, I think I'm going somewhere else now. Hey, what the hell is that? That's, that was even worse than the first one, wasn't it? I was Ross Perot. <laughs> yeah, that was more or less. Very good. Thank you. Going somewhere else now. Uh, all right, top ten reasons Ross Perot dropped out of the presidential race. Here we go, number ten. And this is a shocker. Barber's orders. Number, <laughs> number nine, afraid reporters wouldn't be able to see him behind the podium during conferences at the White House. Number eight. Uh, found out how much the job paid, number seven. <laughs> no. uh, number seven, uh, committed one too many fashion don'ts, number six. Number six, tail fins kept falling off Peromobile. Uh, number five, suddenly remembered he's Mexican. Well, there, right there, how, what was the matter with the guy to think that he had a chance being a... Uh, number four, nobody proofread wording of petitions. George Papard now on ballot in 24 states. Wow, there's trouble. Number three, several acres of $100 bills need ironing and restacking. Number two, ate too many cheeseburgers, now just wants to sleep. And the number one reason Ross Perot dropped out of the presidential race, blisters. There you go. All right, now let me get this straight. Which of the Rolling Stones would you not want to show up? I would want any member you could get. That's right. But if, but if they're not going to show no, up anyway... No, no, never mind that stuff. <laughs> Why, are you a little nervous? You could do away with some of the roadies. <laughs> we wouldn't have needed them. Is, is that good enough? But yeah, let's book the roadies. Can we get Charlie Watts roadies here tomorrow well, some night? some of them may still be here. Charlie had to go somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. Beginning to sound Eastern European almost. <laughs> They do have some Eastern European roadies with them, the Stones. Ah, oh, it's an amazing world we find ourselves living in, isn't it, kids? And our next guest is certainly proof of that. <laughs> this man uh, was nominated for an Academy Award for the Buddy Holly story. Mm -hmm. You know, I have, a, I have a thought here, a brainstorm. Yeah. Charlie Watts was going to be here and play some music for us. Yeah. I, I know that Gary Busey is a musician. He did well, all of his actor. own singing. Uh, yeah, Gary's... An actor. And a musician. He's an actor slash musician. That's right. So uh, maybe we can coax a song out of Gary Busey. Yeah. It's, it's all falling into place now. Uh, this man also has a new motion picture which will be opening this fall called Under Siege. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the program, Gary Busey. Have a seat, Gary. Well, well no, you sing I'll later. Sing, sing later. later. We'll, we'll tell you when to sing. Just, sing have seat. Just have I a seat. Just have a seat. rehearsed or nothing. <laughs> I better be you nice to you, or we'll again. have no guests. Just let me ask you. I want to ask you where you get your ties. Uh, my ties come from uh, a place out in the Queens, a tie warehouse. The tie. The tie, the tie, the tie warehouse. Yeah. Well, let me tell you something. It's now. like that uh, dial a mattress thing. Dial a tie. That's right. You call them up, they bring you ties. I've been noticing something about your shows. You always wear these very garish, outlandish. Uh, you don't care for the tie? No, I'm not saying that, David. Let me finish. Garish and outlandish doesn't exactly sound like praise. Those could be those could be positive adjectives after you hear my story. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I was making a movie called Straight Time with Dustin Hoffman. Yeah. And there were bank robbers there on the set, and they were uh, talking to me about what they'd done. One just got out of prison. His name's John Carlin, very nice man. Right. He was writing screenplay. I asked him, what did he do before he robbed a bank? He said, well, it's really easy. All you do is you wear a conservative shirt, a conservative coat, mm -hmm. and you wear a tie that will absolutely jump off your chest. Right. And I said, what's that for? He said, because when they asked to identify the robber, they all talk about my tie, yeah. how beautiful my tie was. So I thought maybe you were preparing for a bank robbery. <laughs> It, it would work. For, that tie would work. No, it would say you, the guy had an orange tie with stripes on it. 
It would work. Mm -hmm. I, I like the invisible tie you're wearing, Gary. <laughs> It's a transparent time. It's a transparent <laughs> hey, piece of let's, fashion. Let's talk a little bit about Buddy Holly. Now, I know this is a film you made uh, six, seven years ago, or it was longer, wasn't it? 1979. 1979. Wow, it's really been that long, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what is, is this what, yours? No, help yourself. Tell us about Buddy Holly and... <laughs> what? What is this? I don't know. It's a beverage you requested. I'm sorry. I didn't request this. This is black oil. Oh, no. <laughs> Have a sip there. Okay. <laughs> uh, tell, us, tell us about Buddy Holly for people who don't know who he was, don't know the impact that he had on early rock and roll in this country. Uh, who were his influences? What, from where did he come musically, Buddy he, Holly? He listened to a radio station in New Orleans. It was Rhythm and Blues, mm -hmm. Fats Domino, Little Richard, Bob Wills, Hank Williams. Mm -hmm. Those were his influences. Mm -hmm. And he had this energy and this creative force. He was the first songwriter to write the songs, arrange them, and he was the first guy to produce his songs and also do overdubbing. It was called ping-ponging in those days where you set up two recorders and recorded it on one recorder, then moved, moved that sound signal over to the other recorder unless Paul showed him how to do mm -hmm. that. He did 45 songs. He had a three-year Very, career. very short career, right? Three years. Three years, yeah. yes. And he was uh, at the height of his popularity. Was it in the early 60s or was it a little bit later? It was the early 50s. It was 57. So, so it's mid to late 50s. Yes, mid to late 50s. Yeah. And he cut That'll Be the Day for $3.50 mm -hmm. and sent it to Alan Freed. Alan Freed heard it and said, let's book him at the Apollo. And they were the first white rock and roll act to play in the Apollo yeah. Theater. Yeah. And that's when Not Fade Away came about, because that's a Bo Diddley thing. You know, when you listen to the music, uh, the Buddy Holly songs now, they, to me, are reminiscent of the music that was coming over from Great Britain uh, about a decade later in the 60s. It sounded right. about well, 10 Holly, years ahead of that sort of thing. Buddy Holly is Paul McCartney's favorite songwriter. Right. And Lennon and McCartney were influenced very much by Buddy Holly and Elvis Presley. And then they came over with that influence and what it did to them. Now, was I, was I right when I said in that movie you did your own singing and your own uh, guitar playing or not in the Buddy yes, Holly song? Right. Yeah. And you can... <laughs> I tie my own ties. <laughs> Did you tie that? Right? Yeah, of course I tied it. Oh, leave me alone, will you? Uh, no, no, come on, Gary, don't hurt me. Seriously, sit down. Uh, think about a song. You can do a song now. We have an opening. Well, wait a minute now. Okay, let's do a commercial. You think it over, and we'll be back here with Gary Busey. <laughs> Redenbacher is here. Do you like popcorn? I, I grew up on popcorn. Yeah. This, this, really, you were raised on popcorn? Popcorn and fried okra. Fried okra. Uh, fried okra is, is, is just cut up and fried in a pan? It's with cut some... up and fried in a pan, and it's soft and crispy, and we take a grocery sack and line it with tin foil and dump two pounds of it in the grocery sack and go to drive-in movies, and God knows what would happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you, you get a sack of fried okra, and yeah. then... The fun begins. And then the fun begins, yes. It's incredible uh, what you, that okra is. You can't spell your, fun without okra. Well, your but, sensibilities is But uh, okra is, uh, so it was a snack food then for you? Well, it was all things. Yeah. <laughs> where, where did you grow up that you were eating fried okra? Texas and Oklahoma, Dave. <laughs> well, you, Texas? Yeah. Well, great. What, what city in Texas? I was born in Goose Creek. It's 30 miles east of Houston on Black Duck Bay. It's called Baytown now. Yeah. I lived in Marshall and Gladewater and then moved up to Oklahoma, Chickasha, Oklahoma City, Tulsa. Are, are, are these... Are Tulsa, these... Oklahoma's where I went to high school. Yeah, but are these towns, the first one you mentioned in Texas, are they as colorful as the name suggests? Or are, if we went there, would they be sort of flat and barren and, and uh, depressed and oppressed? Or... No, it's nothing like New York. <laughs> 
it's, it's, it's like Texas in Oklahoma. It's a, there's Indians but is and it cowboys. Colorful? There's Indians is and it, cowboys. Yeah. This is colorful. Is it, is it bucolic? Is it pastoral? It's bucolic. You can get ties with bucolic scenes on them and cows. <laughs> you can get ties with weasels flying through the air. <laughs> Wait a minute. You get ties with weasels flying, flying through the air. air. Wow. Yeah, that's like, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> That, that okra is wonderful stuff, isn't it? Uh, but now your family, and uh, I don't think we've ever talked about your family necessarily, but your, your mom, your dad, and brothers and sisters down there? No, they're all in California. No, 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 in the beginning. Yeah, in the beginning, they yeah. were with me. I was I, born I, there. I, I, they raised I, me, I Dave. Know that. I know Barry, they, stop. Boom. Picked you up in a raffle. I know they raised you, but... <laughs> Uh, but were, were agricultural? Was your dad a farmer? No, he was a construction and design manager for Safeway stores. Mm -hmm. He was a CB in the Navy in World War II. I Can see. I sit like this? No. <laughs> Why would you think you could pull a stunt like that? I, I was watching Richard Simmons sweat into the oh, old oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, Richard's the kind of guy that can pull a stunt like that. Okay, I will. Uh, well, let's talk a little bit about uh, one of your new hobbies, and I find this just uh, hard to believe, skydiving. Oh, things. yeah. How did this come about? Skydiving. If you want to face fear and apprehension like you've never faced before, mm -hmm. if you want to leap toward fear and doubt with no sign of, no, fear in space with no sign of doubt, mm -hmm. do skydiving. You're up 13,000 feet. They open the door of the plane. You go through six hours of ground school. You learn everything that can kill you. You sign waivers to the effect that they're not, they're not going to take care of you if you're dead. And then you go through six hours of it. You mm -hmm. get in a plane, the Twin Otter, you go up to 13,000. Oh, the Twin feet. Otter. <laughs> you, the you Twin know, Otter. I know about I'm the Twin Otter. I'm not animal stories. S-T-O-L. The Twin Otter. S-T-O-L. De Havilland. It's a Canadian plane. The De Havilland Twin Otter. S-T-O-L. Well, Short takeoff and landing. Thank you very that's much. That's very impressive, your knowledge of planes. Thank you. The Twin Otter that I went up on went down a few months ago, and it had uh, bad fuel coming from the line, so it went up 80 feet and went boom, down like that. So they kind of took the wind out of my well, sail. Well, you, you took all the fun out of the story, too, now, Gary. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I didn't mean to take fun out of the story, but the, I don't know what's S-T-O-L, de Havilland Twin. Did Olivia de Havilland No, no, no. It's, it's, the, it's the name of the company that built the plane, oh. and it, the, the engines generate 600 horsepower at the shaft. That's all I know about the aircraft. At the shaft? At the shaft. Who, at the drive you know shaft. Stuff? Who did you know I, this stuff? not exactly up? dealing with a marmot here. <laughs> I was that. Yeah. All right. Now, tell us about your experience skydiving. with skydiving. When, you get, when they open the door of the plane, you stand here like this. You have a jump mast here and one here. And you're to go like this. Ready, set, go. Well, when I got to the door of the plane, I froze. Mm -hmm. And they have a video camera out there waiting for me to come out of the plane. But I'm going, wait, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. And they're going, we're over the drop zone. You've got to go. The jump master says, Steve Rahm says, say the three words. What are the three words you say to get out? You have to initiate the jump. Otherwise, you don't pass the test. Oh, good. And it's Patrick Swayze that took me here. Mm -hmm. See, I did a movie with him, Point Break, where he skydived in, and I shook hands with him and said, yeah, I'll go. And then it came time to go, and I went, oh. He said, pick me up at 5 a.m. I'll show you the videotapes of my jumps. We'll go down there. You go through six hours of ground school. You jump out of the plane. You're cool, man. You yeah. got to shoot. Okay. Fine. So now, the you're right there. Yeah. When, I, when I, I went, okay, ready, set, right there is where all the little organs in your body run up. <laughs> all the little things hanging on your body run up. And you go, set, go! And you're out of the plane. You're falling like a, a hamster on speed. You have no idea what you're doing. You're like this. You're like this. Mm -hmm. There it's there. You're falling at 120 miles an hour. They're giving you, you signals. Do you have any, at that speed and under the circumstances, do you have any honest perceptions, or is it impossible to really evaluate what's going on? It's not impossible to really evaluate what's going on because of the ground school you went to, but you don't have honest perception. In fact, you're so far up, and the wind is hitting you so fast because you're going 120 miles an hour, you do not feel like you're falling. Mm. Really? Really. You don't feel like you're falling. Yeah. And when the chute opens at 5,000 feet, I fell 9,000 feet in uh, 55 seconds. And I go, <laughs> pull the ripcord and go, 1,001, 1,002, one, boom! And the <laughs> things hit you here, click, <laughs> and you're pulled up. <laughs> You're going 50 miles an hour up, and then you float down in a rectangle chute that you guide, and it's, yeah. a, it's a feeling of freedom. Now, do you do this all the time, or is that no. it? One time in it? No, I've done three jumps, yeah. but I've been traveling around doing work, and I haven't been able to get back, but I am going back. <laughs> Why did you sneer at me when you said work? <laughs> Was that a sneer? This is not exactly easy here, right? Not exactly stuffing envelopes, you know. Well, uh, Gary, get ready for your big number what? a little bit later. Big get, yeah, we got to do a station I, identification. I we'll be right back here, ladies and gentlemen.
Excited. For 10 years, I have been dying for somebody to ask me about the twin engine otter. Yeah. And yeah. I said to myself, if it ever comes up, I'll tell you everything I know about this aircraft. And it happened here tonight. Just have an hour. Yes, I can go home a happy man. I, don't, was, I, no longer, I no longer care that Charlie Watts will not be with us tonight. Was, uh... Uh, we, uh, we still got plenty of program uh, left here, ladies and gentlemen. Coming up in this half hour, uh, Gary Busey uh, will be doing a song for us. So that is going to oh, be good. Man. sing wow that is gonna be great okay. <laughs> and also we have uh, popcorn magnate uh, orville redenbacher he will be joining us orville a little bit redenbacher <laughs> i love orville redenbacher have you tried his microwave popcorn yeah it's it's, it's about all i eat uh, that ah. and, that of course and fried okra and uh <laughs> Tomorrow on the program, ladies and gentlemen, we have a member of the uh, USA basketball team, Christian Leitner, will be joining us. Holy cow! Christian Leitner, former Duke All-American basketball player, Christian Leitner is going to be a guest. It's time to celebrate! Yeah! yeah. Woo! Ba ba <laughs> Woo! Woo! Yeah! Ba Woo! 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 Have, have you thought about a decaffeinated coffee? Mm, yeah. <laughs> okay, we have to do a commercial, and oh, when we get... commercial! I love commercials! Uh, I love, I love them! Uh, 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 oh, 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 yeah! Oh. Never... was very, very impressive the way you just came whipping through there like that. I didn't know you had it in you. Little things, little things I can do, you know. Hey. Hi, how are you? <laughs> All right, I think this is going to be quite nice if I do say so myself. This is a departure for us here at the program, ladies and gentlemen as well as for our next guest. Uh, you know, uh, he's uh, best known as the drummer for the Rolling Stones. No, no, no. There he is right there. This is his uh, new CD. Uh, it's Dave. called A Tribute to Charlie Parker Dave. with Strings. Excuse me, yeah. Dave. What? Charlie Watts is not here. I know. Me. Just play along, Paul. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the program the Charlie Watts Quintet. Boys, take it away. Just sing. This is for you. Thank you very much. It's called Stay All Night. All right, which good. is what I'm going to do when I start. All right. Yeah!
Charlie Watts was uh, not here tonight. Keith Richards will not be here tomorrow night. So. <laughs> Tuesday, I believe Mick Jagger will not well, be here. He won't be here. Uh, my thanks to Gary Busey and Orville Redenbacher. We have to leave now, and you know what that means, Paul, don't what you? Is that? More commercials. Oh, I, I love I commercials. I know this guy loves those I love commercials. Them. Oh, oh he's going to go crazy Holy for the commercials God, again now. Oh, he's doing it. Oh, wow. Gary. Yeah. Look at that guy. He can't get enough commercials. Oh, Paul, shut it up. for the Rolling Stones. He is also an accomplished jazz musician. He has a new CD. It's called Long Ago and Far Away. It's a great pleasure to welcome the Charlie Watts Quintet featuring Bernard Fowler. Folks, take it away. <laughs> Changed a bit, lovely as ever, I must admit. What's new? How did the romance come through? We haven't met since then, gee, but it's nice to see. What's new? Probably I'm boring you, but seeing you is grand, and you were so sweet to offer your hand. I understand, I do. 
Pardon my asking what's new Of course you couldn't know I haven't changed, I still love you so I still love you so. 